Hi, everyone. This is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalu webinar. It is Saturday, the 4th of August, 2018. And in the room, just to let you know who everyone, that everyone is here, we have Elisa, Christine, Dawn, L, Ava, Ian, Michelle, Reinhard, Stephanie, S Steve, Susan, and our guest, who is Terry Rainier. Terry is from North Carolina, I believe. Are you from North Carolina? Uh, well, that's where I'm living now. I'm okay. from planet Earth right now, actually. <laughs> okay. Let <laughs> me introduce in you in just a moment, but we have Terry in the room. And just so everyone knows, just some little housekeeping stuff. Um, this is a Saturday Human Colony webinar. If you would like to be a part of Human Colony, you can go to hukalo.org and join us for $10 a month. You get all access to all of our classes and webinars and all of the great uh, great things that we have going on. Also, on from the 16th to the 21st of November is the Hukalo Ascension Workshop. That'll be in Dansville, New York, and it's for $400, and you will have uh, Reiki classes, telepathy classes, channeling classes. We'll be channelings every day by Jim and by Max. And it'll be just a very fun time for everybody. That's five days in beautiful upstate New York. If you're flying there and you already have gotten your you're, um, you, you already signed up for the classes. Remember to fly into Rochester and not Buffalo. They're picking up from Rochester, not Buffalo. So that's just a very important thing to know. And you will find all the information on hukalo.org. So Terry is our guest today. Hi. Hi, Karen. With a little bit of delay, I apologize to everyone. <clears throat> but Terry, you're, why don't you just tell everybody who you are where you're from, I know you're in North Carolina now, but just tell everybody who you are and where you're from and, and what it is that you are, that you're doing. So, originally from Florida. Okay. Born and raised there. Um, moved to Connecticut and spent some time there, spent some time in Singapore, uh, and now here in North Carolina and these beautiful mountains of the Appalachians. Uh, I've been on a journey uh, for the last 30 plus years of self-discovery, know thyself, uh, trying to understand my own spirituality and been open to learning and receiving and I've had many instances with angelic encounters and the spirit realm. And uh, most recently, a year ago, uh, an awakening to um, memories from a past planetary life and or present <laughs> it's all the same isn't it and it's just been a wonderful journey to um, feel all of that and at the about the same time last year another entity came in and was speaking to me and helping me to assimilate and understand it all and I was like well who are you and they're like well we're the divine realm and I'm like well what does that mean <laughs> And they're like, well, we're consciousness prior to creation. I'm like, oh, and they're like, we're here to help you sort it all out and organize it so you better understand it. And I'm like, okay, great. So, so here we because are. we met in India, we met in Rishikesh. Oh, we were, yes. We were staying in the ashram just a couple doors down from each other, if you remember. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I got to uh, run around a little bit with you up and down the streets there. And we started talking and I said to you, well, I'm a channel. And you said, well, I channel. And that was such a great, uh, you know, such a great exchange to find out that you were also channeling. And you told me about the divine realm and you did a little channeling for me at that moment. And it was such a beautiful, um, it was such a beautiful expression of just clarity and understanding of the mechanics of how things are. That was what I really got from them, that they just had this very clear overview of the way things work and how they should work and what some recommendations are for life, basically, if, if that's, do you agree? But, yeah. Yeah. And they were yeah. so very, they were so very kind. And so, but, but before that you were working really in the business world, right? What's your, yeah. what's your yeah. background in that? So just because it, you know, it gives a fuller uh, 
overview mm -hmm. of who you are and what your background is just to know let you know that you know everyone comes from somewhere different and that somewhere different and those different elements contribute to what you'll be able to share with others later you know true yeah so yeah 20 over 20 years in the corporate world uh in supply chain management and uh in the last five years of my career in that realm, <laughs> I was traveling the globe and helping to transform several business units in several countries in, with the, regards to their supply chain. And uh, it, it was, a, it's been a fascinating journey. Um, my boss at the time had said, you have an uncanny ability to relate so well with people and um, if you can learn how to share that, that would be really wonderful. And so yeah. for the last 10 years or so, I've been sorting out that. I'm like, well, it just comes natural. And recently in January, the divine realm was like, oh, well here, these are the 10 steps to teach others. And I was like, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so they're very they're very methodical huh they're very straightforward <laughs> so should we write these down these 10 steps oh gosh um or you have them written down for us i i have them <laughs> well because, because i'll tell you a book i have very clear uh, very clear guidelines is always you know the best thing but to, before you do that did you did you all of a sudden i mean were you always spiritual or was this something that gradually happened how did that work yeah so i i lived a fairly what i would call normal life growing up yeah i was raised catholic and thought of god as the man in heaven <laughs> the man in heaven so, on the cloud with the beard yep that's him and the, and the angels and the and the yes and my roommate talked about i'm hearing feedback so I'm not sure what that's Let me about. mute myself while you're talking. Let me do that. Oh, okay. So my roommate in college, she had expressed how she saw God as kind of this super energy. And oh my goodness, I had a headache for a week. And then fast forward, I got married very young out of, out of uh, when I graduated from college and my world turned upside down um, as as my husband at that time went through a bunch of challenges and um, I sought spiritual awakening at that point and found myself in Al-Anon as to help deal with the AA he was having, um, the alcoholic issues. But anyway, fast forward, so that kind of started me on a new journey and then I heard about Deepak Chopra, went to one of his seminars with Wayne Dyer and Marianne Williamson. And when I heard about quantum physics, then I had a headache for a month. So, you know, there was just these different things that occurred throughout my life as um, I continued to sort out what were all the meaning, what was the meaning of life. And then in my early 30s, about 20 years ago, I came across um, Brenda Morgan, she's a meditation teacher, and she was instrumental in really helping me understand a bigger picture uh, with the teachings of another being, Michael Silverman, who's no longer in human form. And it was just another up-leveling for me in my spiritual growth. And then about two years ago, almost three years ago, I found out about Rika Zimmerman and she really helped me to understand another level of infinite possibilities in the spiritual realm. And so, you know, I'm so thankful for all the things that have happened in my life. And I had gone through a coming out process in my thirties too. And so now I feel like I'm in another level of coming out in my life all over again with uh, sharing the information from the divine realm. I can't, I think you're on mute. Yeah. I am on mute. So, okay. but how did you, so, so what was the actual process of, because you talked about having your memory of being on from another place and then 
what was the actual process of the first time you channeled or the first time that you got your information? So the process was we were in a soul journeying ceremony in Sedona with a lot of the other coaches um, in Rika's program and we were doing like a closing ceremony. And on the other side of the world, one of the other coaches was doing a ceremony with some ancient uh, practitioners of a healing methodology in Bhutan. And there was just magic in the air. And one of the other coaches that she just came over and she put her forehead against mine and she just held it there. And it was like, and we were like looking like cross-eyed at each other, you know, <laughs> because our foreheads were touching. And all this information started flooding down, all the memories, and I just started crying. And I realized, oh my gosh, you're my mom. Oh my gosh, from this other planet. And I was like, you found me. Oh, I can feel safe again. <laughs> so it was just this amazing moment. And then could, you know, see that so many of the people that were there in that ceremony were also from the planet. And it was just a very magical moment. And and then it just the information it just kept flooding i had to drive that night to phoenix to get on a plane and then 12 hours later from that flight i was on another 24-hour journey flight to singapore and then to bali from there and it was just everything just kept flooding in and flooding in and i would just could write and write and write and record as fast as i could and and the divine realm came in at that point because I was like, I'm like, I don't even understand all this stuff that I'm writing down. I don't understand what it means, but it's okay. I'll just keep trusting the flow of it. And I just kept allowing, allowing, allowing. And if anything, that was the biggest key for me, not to block it and go, well, this is weird and crazy and have judgment about it. I just stayed curious with it. And I just kept allowing and allowing. And, and a year later, it's just been an amazing journey of allowance. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, so after that happened, what is the what is the way that because do you channel for groups of people? Or are you channeling mostly for yourself? How is the channeling now working within your life? And what are you so, using it for? I know you're doing a lot of stuff with it, and it's giving you a lot of clear guidance as to what they want, what they want you to do, the messages you want to bring forth, but maybe you can talk to that. And Michelle was asking, what is the place? Where is this planet that you oh, had? Yeah, that's a cute story. Because <laughs> um, I tried to, I asked them, I'm like, well, what's the name of it? You're like, Where, what is the name of our home planet? And they're like, <laughs> like, <laughs> not like, <laughs> okay. so, so that's the most awesome answer time. I've ever heard for a name of a planet. <laughs> you know, it's, that's awesome. it's, not, it's like dolphin speak, really, and and it is a, a it is a a planet of lots and lots of water, majority water, and a, just high peaks of land. I would say Kauai probably most represents it on um, planet Earth, and we can talk a little bit about that too if we want how that's the beauty of planet Earth, that it represents so many other planetary lives and all assimilated on one planet. Um, so the way Zircon came about and naming it that was back in 2012, I was at Universal Studios with my family and we all had fingerprint to get in to the, and everybody in the family went through and my fingerprint wasn't working. And they were putting lotion on it. They were doing all kinds of things, trying to get it to work and it wasn't working. And my dad turned around and he said, I guess this is a good time to tell you you're from Zircon. And we all laughed. And in that moment, I felt some truth to it, but I didn't know how to explain it. And I just was like, oh, okay, you know, whatever. And so that's why we call it Zircon now. And there's a group of us that uh, we recognize we're from there and we'll, we'll ask questions and I share information with them. Um, 
we did a home planet play just on Wednesday with several of the coaches that I know uh, in, in the Life Transformed group coaching. And it was great. We all just went in our little Merkabas and we went to our home planets and consciously allowed them to receive all of our earthly experiences. And then uh, they were so excited. They wanted to share some of their information and downloads and, and activations with us. And then we all came back and we shared together. And so that's the extent of the group sharing that we have done so far. But there's been a lot of individual sharing along the way. And um, I've shared messages that have come through with several people that I'm close with. Um, but yeah, they're like, yes, we want you to get it out there on YouTube. We want you to write a book. We'd love for you to have this turn into a movie. And I'm like, whoa, 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 slow down. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> you know, there's only one of me. They're going to have to duplicate me about 20 times and, and call in a lot of support from other people. So. <laughs> So why don't you do? Why don't you give us the ten? Uh, okay. Things. If you feel, if you if, if you're willing to share. Oh, somebody's got a mute there. Who's that? Buenos días. Oh. Si tú por ahí. Ya nací. Salash, Salish. Salish, mute your mic, hon. Wait a second, Terry. Yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to, i got to pull it up. That's okay, I'm trying to get Salish muted here. <laughs> there you If anyone has any questions, you can put your uh, a question before Terry starts channeling. If you have any questions for Terry, um, you can put a, just a little indication in the chat, and uh, we will we will call on you. Also on the in YouTube, if you have any questions for Terry, you can you can type them in, and, and Don is watching the chat, so we will take them. We'll be taking questions from both. Um, yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Okay. So they shared this information with me back in January and they they said it's really important for us to um, come forward with conscious relationships. The conscious relationship between me, myself, and I with that goes on within us. That uh, we have this younger inner child aspect that's the me and the myself that's the adult aspect and the parent side of us and the I that is that divine access, divine intelligence that resides within us, that part of us that knows everything from that vibration of infinite source, divine love. So they are very keen on having us understand how to have healthy relationships from a very conscious perspective. And so they had downloaded, they called them the 10 C's of, of transforming our lives personally and, and professionally. And as an introduction, they would like me to share a little bit about how we came from wholeness into the realm of separation and how we're coming back into wholeness again. So if you can think about a clock with the number 12 at the top and that that represented the wholeness that existed, that we knew of, that we knew in all aspects of our internal being that we are. And as time went here on earth, we kind of uh, went to like one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, until we got to the point of six o'clock, which was the complete opposite of remembering our wholeness of who, who we are. And we can be at any stage of this. 
And then at some point we start to remember aspects of our wholeness until we come seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, back to wholeness again. So they also want us to know that we can be in wholeness in any moment. We don't have to wait for um, it to be our next lifetime, that we can do it, oh, I'm in a moment of separation and we feel that because it feels really painful. <laughs> and then go, oh, wait, I can remember, I can come back to the wholeness. And if you think about your heart as kind of being the center of that wholeness and really allow the heart space to open up and to expand and, and if you have to pull on previous memories of heart happiness, do it, right? Um, they came up with this acronym for DREAM, desire, remembering every day as miraculous. So when we really feel how every day is a miracle and we really tap into that from our heart space, it changes everything. It, it, everything becomes more joyful in our life. So that's kind of the introduction for the 10 C's. Um, so it's a method. Um, it's just kind of a step point. So the first one is conscious choice and that we actually have to be really present with the fact that we have choice and that we can in any moment recognize we always have the power to choose how we perceive the world around us and our experiences and ourselves. The second C is courage. And that inside of us, we're all super beings. We're all superheroes and heroines. And to allow ourselves to be vulnerable in expressing all of who we are. So oftentimes we think of superheroes as having to be tough and protected. The, the reality is it's the opposite of that. It's the more um, that we release those shields that more of our um, miraculous presence and ability to connect with others occurs. Which brings us to step number three, which is all about connecting. And connecting through that sense of presence and, and having and holding that space for another person uh, through curiosity and really truly wanting to understand the other person. And we're gonna take a little side note here. They had shared that earth life is like a, a cultural exchange program <laughs> for the intergalactic community. So there's representatives all across the galaxy that have come to the earth and we're in human form, we're in plants and animals, we're in all types of forms, the water, the mountains. We've taken all sorts of forms as representatives from across the galaxy. So when we get really curious, um, it provides a way for us to connect with another and it makes life much more magical and playful and joyful. Okay, there's something else coming in about that. And when we encounter those that don't feel so magical and joyful and don't necessarily want to play with us, that that's okay. We can let them have their experiences of that. We don't have to join in the space that they're in with separation, we, but we don't also have to pull them out of it. We just stay being ourselves in that connected space and having our hearts open to wanting to know and be curious without having to feel like we had to fix or change any of that. Yeah, you, your whole thing that you just said was actually a question from one of the people and they wanted to know, how do we hold our sacred space? And I think you just basically answered the question, but maybe you wanna uh, just touch on yeah. that really quick. 
and, and I and I'm writing these down. So we've we've gone through number three, but but uh, yeah. What okay. <laughs> so sacred space. That's a great question. So um, one of the things that can there are many ways to hold your sacred space. So it's about tuning into yourself to find those things that help support you. For me, I imagine grounding my energy deep into the center uh, crystalline core of Mother Earth. And then I allow that deep connection to be firmly rooted in her. And I also allow my body to become like a bridge of light expanding up into the infinite source that pervades everything that is the pure potentiality of all of creation in the beginning i didn't have that awareness so i would surround myself with and i still have all my fun play toys and beans with me I would surround myself with crystals and certain books that meant a lot and inspired me and helped me on my journey. Uh, different open-eyed meditation that I learned uh, with, with Brenda Morgan's group and you know, allowing for infinite possibilities to be curious about life from the Rika Zimmerman program. So it all comes together within me to find what best supports me inside. Anandra George's class, you know, and, and meeting Karen on the steps of Paramath Nikitan, and when she was playing a happy drum, I was so excited. I just, I didn't know her. I just ran over, sat right down close to her, and I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, I love this. What is it? And, you know? So that sacred space. Yeah. That was really awesome. about connecting to your curiosity. What's the best supports you? Yeah. Yes, and, and giving me stuff when I was having food poisoning. <laughs> <laughs> Try this. <laughs> um, okay, thank you for that. Um, just, just this is also just a question. I guess it's about the divine realm, and and this is from Cami. She says. She wonders if the channeled, ch ch the channeled, if the channeled beings, the channeled entities, represent an organization, or they're just acting out of their own personal interest. That's a good question, actually. Yeah. So when I asked them about that, they said their consciousness prior to all of creation. So basically, when you come from wholeness, there's an initial consciousness that arises about. Oh, well, here I am. Now, what would I like to create? So that's where they are. They've talked about, because I've, I've asked them, I'm like, there's so many people out there channeling because I've been trying to learn. I'm like, whoa, people say, hey, have you tapped into this person? Have you, you know, listened to this channeler? And I'm like, oh, no, okay, well, I'll go check it out. You know, and I'm like, there's so much out there on the planet right now. And, and they said, yeah, because there's, the veil has dropped. Um, so now all the intergalactic beings can communicate with us, which is great. And so there is a lot of information out there and there's a lot of, um, there are some that have agendas and, and that's okay. Be mindful of where you wanna align with. That's all, just be not careful, that's the wrong word. No, be Conscious. mindful and just be aware, just be aware yeah. that the, sort of more dense the being is, the closer it is to human form or human uh, density or vibration, the more ego there is. And the more, you know, and some beings have an agenda that's very honorable. They, they want to come in, they want to help. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think the, what, like the divine realm, I think Theos and many others, their sole purpose is really to turn us in to ourselves to let us get to know us who we are discovering our true divine nature and that's sort of a different um it's just a different uh, uh level i suppose or a different thing 
It's more in line with what we learn in, say, the Vedas or, or why we go to India or what we start, do when we start really meditating. That's more to get to know ourselves as opposed to, say, learn, you know, what are the habits of this person on this planet. There's just two different things, but we can tap into all of it. And channelers across the board, many tap into all, all levels of everything. So like you said, just be aware of what it is you are accessing and and what is the what is the purpose of it and for who is the purpose yeah yeah well said thank you so we, we can go back to your number four okay sure <laughs> okay so just just quickly conscious choice was number one courage to embody our super selves <laughs> number two Number three was connecting through presence and um, through curiosity. Number four is confidence <laughs> in ourselves and in others. So there's a way um, that we can tend to blame um, one another. And they would like to see us start to have confidence in one another rather than doing the blame game. And the confidence that you know, kind of talks about self-responsibility too, right? And that confidence to um, really allow ourselves to shine. And when we see and meet other beings, that we see them in the beauty and the super beings that they already are, right? So they might be from a personality perspective of separation, projecting something different than that, and yet we can look past that and see the beauty of who they truly are and the wholeness of their heart. So number, oh, so number five is curiosity on, on, it, on itself. <laughs> <laughs> and allowing, but this level of curiosity, the other level of curiosity was more about connecting with another. This level of curiosity is really allowing yourself to explore the infinite possibilities of what you want to create what, for your life. You know, that we all have that ability within ourselves to manifest what it is we want to experience here. And we don't have to have judgment about it either. Like everything that we're experiencing, we can just look at it and observe it and go, oh, wow, um, the chocolate ice cream was okay for me, but I really love strawberry, right? So, and then just know that, right? And then go, okay, and what else is possible? Wow, macadamia nut, woohoo, right? <laughs> so, very simplistic uh, <laughs> example. The simplest answer is the best, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that level of curiosity. Um, number six is uh, having the clarity um, of what that is that we want to manifest. What is our vision? What is our mission? What are the strategies um, to help fulfill that mission and that vision. So, and, and allowing ourselves um, to receive all the input uh, from the people around us, that even something that might appear as criticism can actually be very helpful in the overall uh, co-creation of what it is we want to bring into, into our version of reality. So in that, um, once we have that clarity, then it makes the creativity process, which is step number seven, uh, much more easy to obtain. And this is where we can uh, really get into the innovation and 
and allowing for the infinite possibilities. So like each of these steps just keeps building on one another. So from that level of infinite possibility, curiosity to the clarity of what we might like to create to, wow, how can we all come together and collaborate rather than compete? I mean, that's why I'm a big Elon Musk fan. You know, I love how he puts things out on open source and says, great, I make electric cars. Hey, here, here's all we know. You guys go make them too. You know, that type of, um, of collective co-creation is what the divine realm is like applauding. <laughs> so, And it's, yeah, it's, a, it's not being, how do you say, greedy either. It's being right. generous with your knowledge, with your you know, sharing with, with your, yourself and your, your creation, because it's allowing for more co-creation to expand and to um, you know, add on without the jealousy of that someone else may do something better or, or the need to, you know, hoard it really. And that's what we are moving out of this duality of, of this moving more into a collective consciousness that we're all in it together idea, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Unity consciousness. Michelle. Yeah. Yes. Cool. You know, and, and I was so pleased that they were able to like kind of define it in this very step-by-step -step process, you know, which brings us into that step number eight, which is all about the collaboration and and the supportive communication that exists between all of us and how we can be playful in it it doesn't have to be serious like oh dear we have this issue how are we going to resolve it you know it's like great we have this challenge let's go you know let's be let's let's all go beyond into infinite possibilities and come to come down with new solutions that are beyond anything we could have ever imagined right so and number nine is having the commitment to do this step-by-step -step process in our everyday lives. And number 10 is the celebration, right? Just really allowing ourselves to celebrate um, the relationship that we're having with ourselves, with each other, with the so-called so challenges that arise in our life. Yeah. So that's it. It's very nice to have such a step-by-step -step guide and be able to, you know, have the clarity. Um, people are asking, they missed some of the numbers. So I will just say to everyone, go back through and listen so that, that uh, we can move on. But maybe you can give just quickly, say, five through ten again, just because some people missed them. And for people coming in, please mute your mic. Caitlin, I see your mic keeps coming on. And... So if you if you're going out and coming in because your your line is dropping, please mute your mic as soon as you get in, just for the sake of everything. Okay, go ahead. So I could just um, run through. Number one was conscious choice. Number two is courage to embody your super self. <laughs> Number three, connecting. Number four, confidence. Number five, curiosity. Number six, clarity. Number seven, creativity. Eight, collaboration. Nine, commitment. Ten, celebration. Yay! I like that little look after you said commitment. Maybe, yes. ex maybe explain commitment a little bit more. Yeah, so <laughs> it's easy to get caught up in the dramas of daily life. <laughs> it's easy to forget. Um, and we get going on autopilot. Right? So commitment is about really bringing that into ourselves and saying, what do I want to create? And owning it instead of saying, oh, well, this is pulling me over here and that's pulling me over there. And we just lose our center and 
our sense of commitment um, to the spiritual evolution of our soul. So. Very good. Very good. So we're at the six o'clock mark. We started a little late, but are you okay to channel for about an hour? Sure. Channel like if people want to ask me questions. Yeah. Yeah. Because yes. people I think would like to, to meet the divine realm and, and to speak sure. with them. Yeah. Yes. We're all curious. Yes. yes. So do, do you need any time for preparation? Do you? Yeah, I, I'm just going to center into directly with them. Okay. Um, it, I just talk in my normal me as me. It That's just how I do it. Well. So it's yeah. not like something else bizarre yeah. happens with my voice you get, or you anything. Don't get, you, don't, you don't get like a British accent or anything like that? No. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so and and just however they do, if they start with some kind of intro message, however it goes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michelle. All right. Yeah, they're already just so ecstatic that we got to share the 10 seeds. So. <laughs> they're like, finally, we gave this to you in January. Finally, you got it out. <laughs> See? You have, you had actually told me about that in India, I think. And I think I'd asked them about you, and you said, I, I don't know. I have them written down. I have to go look at them. I think that was your response to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm ready. All right. So does anyone have any questions? And if not, I, I will start. If you do, you have questions in the YouTube chat, you will just type them in and we'll, we'll start answering them. So hello, Divine Realm. And, and I don't know who has their mic not muted, but I think that's Caitlin again. Caitlin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come after you. You got to mute your mic, son. <laughs> But for, um, so Divine Realm, it's very nice to uh, meet you and thank you for coming through for us today. Is there any sort of general message that you would like to share with us just as an introduction? Or in, because I, I understand that most groups, they have their, their sort of core message and what would that be for you, you all? To remember the wholeness that you are in all that you're able to create, that the connection and the relationship that you have with yourself and with everything around you is the key to present happiness and its expression. For, for, for the average human, and, and, and I really like your explanation of the clock, I, I explain it a little differently. I talk about concealed and, and revealed grace or remembering who you are and not remembering who you are is basically what, what I say. But um, in that moment, for us, we, we, we spend a lot of times remembering who we, trying to remember who we are, but we've also have completely forgotten who the other person is, you know. And so do you have any kind of, I don't know, exercise for us that would, bring us back quickly to that remembering so that we can, if we notice that we're out of sorts, really, it's, it's usually because we're not remembering who we are and we're definitely not remembering the other person. But is there any sort of, yeah, little exercise that we could do, like the rubber band on the wrist that we can quickly try to snap ourselves back into that remembering? <laughs> I'm I'm laughing because they're laughing. Uh, okay. They're, Thank they're, you. Uh, they're, <laughs> they are uh, sharing. Yes. Um, <laughs> Just ohm it right out. Center yourself. Yes. So simple. So simple. So simple. Thank you yeah. for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, but you don't remember. 
sometimes you do not remember, do you? No. And 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 and, and they're also adding in do-overs. They're they're big on do-overs. Like mm. you, you see yourself, you're in the midst of it, and then you go, "Oh, I've completely forgotten my center." And and you can just say, "Time out." Do over. Yeah. And come back in to that relationship with yourself or another person from that more centered space. Yeah. So you so in the middle of a conversation, you can just say, wait. Oh. <laughs> yes. And you can do your alms energetically. Say you're in the middle of a business meeting, right? You're not gonna be like, oh wait. You know, like I would do that a lot in my business. And when I was uh, in business meetings, I didn't do an ohm. Yeah. But I'd be like, oh my gosh, there's so much tension in this meeting. And I would just, I learned open eyed meditation. So I would just go into an open eyed meditation. And all of a sudden, the dynamics of the entire team started to change. Yeah. Because you, know, so, you changed. So I, I let, I didn't keep holding that tension. I just let it dissolve and wash out. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Michelle has a oh, Michelle has a, a question for for the divine realm. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi, so nice to meet you. Hello. Um, so I love that you have ten very specific things that's really helpful for a person like me. Um, and I was thinking about a couple of things that were really good because I have carried around a lot of times like I'll enter a situation and maybe I won't ground and center or and and I'm also have experienced sometimes attacks when I work with certain people um, of different energies that I feel physically and so I get worried and I want to like hole up and be very confined and not with people um, so I really liked what you said about, um, I'm not sure. Oh, having confidence in self and others and having the, can't remember which it was. But anyway, the point was, I was wondering once, we don't have to fear. It, what I got from that is we don't have to fear what other people are doing. We can allow them their experience. And we have a lot, a lot, a lot of things happening in the world. I don't really watch the news, but I know there's a really ton of gross stuff happening. Um, and in that way, for a lot of people, I think it's really confusing. My default is, I kind of almost have apathy because I know it's happening for a reason and everybody is entitled to their own experience, you know, just like I am. Um, and I'm pretty sure that if I send love out to that situation, then that at least gives it a glimmer or a, a smidgen of a chance to get different <laughs> as opposed to sending out hate and judgment. Um, I, I guess I'm kind of curious about um, how much power does that actually have when we catch ourselves in a place of judgment of, of somebody else's process or being in fear of somebody else's process? Um, like, is it, um, how much of it needs us to go back to the heart space to find that place of love and to send that out to that person place thing or situation versus doing that plus action yes we understand um the primary is to feel Feel and fill your entire being with love and light. When your being is filled fully with love and light at ev in every cell of your existence, then that transmutes everything else around. 
So mm -hmm. the person that you might have been feeling negative energy from and that perception that what is that's calling it negative right. is 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 separation right but yet when you hold yourself fully in the light and love within then you just see that it's temporary experience that they're having of separation and you you it's not looked at in terms of a judgment form of bad or good it's right. just an observation that they might be you know closer to six o'clock on that clock rather mm -hmm. than 12. Mm -hmm. and you still know that they are a 12. Mm -hmm. um, then as far as the action that's going on around the planet the more of us that are holding that level of love and light in every cell of your being that's that's transmitting so if you in your awareness can can bring your light body love body heart centered self to that area it helps to transmute what is happening there it it's like a, it elevates the intensity of the vibration for whatever that needs to occur can so that wholeness can be realized again mm -hmm. so it's not about directing it to get better because mm -hmm. that's an assumption that it's not already okay right. <laughs> it's an allowance that says i'm holding the space that we're all holding the space for the love and the light to um, play out as it needs to for every soul's evolution in order for the entire vibration to up level right back to wholeness back to number 12 and that in our number 12 wholeness that there can still be an individuation of personalities and unique characteristics that flow through that. Um, it's not like we're all going to become trees or, right? So there's still an um, individual, they, they're very clear about this, there's still an individual um, aspect to our presence, even though we're in union with the wholeness. Mm -hmm. Understood. I actually had an experience uh, a couple days ago, and for some reason, I took off my need to shield hat, and I just kind of said, "Here is a person who needs a lot of help, and he's really afraid." And I just kind of really centered myself. I surrounded myself with Reiki, and I just committed. And I was there just to be with, and. It was literally the first time, and I can't remember how long I have spent time where it was enjoyable, like it was lovely. It was just really lovely because whatever he was experiencing, I, I, I allowed. I didn't judge it. I was just like, here's all I know. Here's all I can share with you. I just have, I have love for you, and here are some things I've learned. And it really shifted the whole dynamic where normally I would be like afraid that I'm getting, you know, jabbed, attacked by all this negative stuff that's around him. And that didn't happen. So I, I thought that was a good topic just to bring up um, since you guys mentioned it. If yeah. it's okay, I would like to ask about clarity about um, the vision and mission. Um, I have a really difficult time with that if you would mind speaking to that how one i don't know say who is very um as they would coin the term add on earth um if you have some advice or some words of wisdom to that so the clarity comes when you are most connected and have the confidence 
in you, in the wholeness of you. So the more time that you can spend developing that connection within yourself, the me, myself, and I that we talked about, and allowing that to just release into the wholeness of who you are and that level of confidence, that it makes it easier for the clarity to arise in terms of the, the vision and the mission. And in it, there's a, an allowance that arises within the body and within the heart. Um, and you'll feel drawn to certain things that people will, might call intuition or following your instincts or my gut feels this, a lot of names for it. But listening for the guidance and feeling what resonates most with the wholeness of who you are and allowing that to come forward. Is that a feeling in the heart space, like when your heart chakra speeds up? I mean, can that, I mean, I know it's different for everybody, but my guide seems, I like to muscle test because that's the cheater's way, I guess, but, and it's easy instead of sitting and feeling in your body what your body is telling you. Yeah. But so, if you, go ahead. Yeah, so whatever techniques that work best for you, utilize them. Terry uses a pendulum occasionally, uh, uses a form of allowing the body to go forward or backwards. Okay. There's lots of things that occur uh, that can be tools for helping assist. Some people like to draw the runes or uh, the cards and then allowing for the wholeness of you to incorporate all the signals that you're getting. Um, you could be driving down the road and you see a billboard that might speak to the, your mission. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. There are oracles everywhere, basically, aren't there? I have yeah. a friend who says he uses the television as an oracle. He just asks a question and then flips through the channels. And then inevitably, wherever he stops, he gets, he gets an answer. So there's always, the universe is always willing to answer your questions. Um, Reinhard had a question. Reinhard, do you want to ask? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I have a question because um, I come from from a development where I have not far advanced as uh, most of you. And um, I have around me um, people who are not uh, recognizing my um, spiritual position and um, but you have answered a lot of uh, questions in the last uh, things uh, uh, you allowed to come through to you Terry um, but when I am um, in in that position as I am so um, <laughs> my, the idea came before when we talked about OM, OM uh, if if I mentally uh, say myself or am in, in my mental um, capacity without uh, voicing it loud and when I want to take out um, the pressure f around me uh, around which are around myself and to center myself if this is a valuable uh, way to do um, or does it need to be uh, the spoken frequency of own to allowed to center myself. That, that was my question. Um, if you can give your thoughts about it, it would be really nice. Thank you. I'm listening. Yes. So the OM will connect you when you have connected with it. So if OM is not part of your current practice you can't there's many tools we want to reiterate there are many tools this is one that's most simple so if you understand that om 
represents that wholeness and you recite it verbally within yourself out loud to yourself mirrors are great to actually recite it out loud in the mirror feel the vibration of it and how it feels throughout every cell of your being how it allows your heart to open that happens through connecting with that sound of wholeness yeah. then when you're in a situation that's public you can internally remember and call in the sound of that ohm without having to say it out loud your internal body and heart will remember it by calling it forth in that moment okay this is a good uh hint because um but i have to do it um um verbally as you said in front of a mirror and uh, that my body can remind itself about the frequency which had been generated with it okay thank you very much that yeah. helps thank you yes and 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 talk to karen because she knows how to do the proper pronunciation of the om so that it will be beneficial and effective for your overall harmonization within your body yeah i'm certain karen will help me with this thank you i sure will <laughs> thank you for that um christine has a question go ahead christine um <laughs> I don't know what um, I. Whatever that question was, it has escaped me. <laughs> you said uh, you you made a <laughs> you made a statement. You said, "I do the body going backward and forward when I want to know if the food is good. I'm looking at is good for me. What? Oh, are you doing kinetic testing? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. What's funny is um, I've noticed within myself that I only do it when I want to know. Like when I'm going to pick uh, dog dog treats, I'll put it um, the dog treat up to my um, chest, and I'll say, um, "Is this good for the dogs?" And I'll rock forward for yes and backward for no, and I have no idea what the people around me think in the store. But um, what's funny is the dogs don't like the ones that are good for them. <laughs> but. Um, that was just a comment. What um, I <laughs> what I would like to know is one of the things that I find really difficult is um, recognizing my shadows. I recognize the finger pointing. If you point the finger at somebody for something, either mentally or physically, and three pointing back at you, or whatever is bothering you about someone is really something within yourself. But how can um, how can I be more aware of this instead of, you know, just remembering it at a convenient time or something? Like when I'm trying to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is more about the, the shadow side and how to release that. Yeah. Yes. All your experiences are serving for your soul's evolution. Okay. When you feel something is called your shadow side, um, it's just a degree of separation that you're experiencing and it, there's a, a tendency in the human field to to feel a physical level of contraction within your nervous system when you become very connected with the me myself and i that exists within you you will sense that physical contraction and know that there's something there that you can consciously choose to shift 
to allow in your perception to allow for a place of wholeness. There's a cat fight going on in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Did, did, was that clear or? Yeah, um, I think when you're saying a contraction, I'm seeing as a sense of unease or nervousness or not wanting to be in that physical being. So I find something to um, distract me instead yeah. of dealing with the. Okay. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Tony has a question. Tony, go ahead. Hi, Terry. Hi, Tony. So my question is, how do you release the unconscious hypervigilance protectiveness to peaceful presence in the beginning of love you are when your past lives keep coming up? When you recognize that all of those past lives served your highest evolution, when you acknowledge that, that even as dark and separated from, were it from 12 to six on the clock, and it, and, it, and it takes a variety of forms that from the human perception seem extremely violent and um, just very sad, right? Uh, from the human condition perspective. When you recognize that they're just all a series of experiences and that there were So there are a sense of soul agreements that take place that says, yes, I'm willing to experience being the bully. And yes, I'm willing to experience being the victim. Because for, for your soul's evolution, there are a variety of things that you want to experience to be able to say, oh, yes, okay, I know what it feels like to be whole. And then we just kind of, the whole human planet got further and further down along the line to number six and they forgot and now they're rising back up again and that's just all part of part of the evolution of understanding the wholeness of all of creation that there doesn't need to be judgment around all of those experiences that might have been a full version of separation in terms of the levels of what we would call crimes against humanity and against the earth. And when you're able to see it from that perspective, that big picture perspective, it allows for the infinite love of wholeness to be present through all of the experiences of separation. Does that help? Yes, yeah, so that helps the unconscious reconnect with the consciousness of love. Yes, Be, you have to make a conscious choice to reconnect to the wholeness of love. And when you make that conscious choice, all of the unconscious starts to get transmuted. Most humans go around life not conscious of that. Not, they're not making the conscious choice to connect to the wholeness of love, the wholeness of all of, the wholeness that's even prior to any of the creation. It's that level of infinite source and pure potentiality. Right? Does that help? Thank you so much. Yes, I'm, my whole body is um, vibrating and I feel all this other parts of me of consciousness coming back in. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Elle has a question. Elle, you can unmute if you have a question. If you'll mute Terry or, or yes. uh, Tony, thank you. Yes. 
Um, hello. Hello. I'd like well. to ask, um, where is the the line, the border between giving a tough love and criticizing? Could you hear that? So I heard, um, what is the border between tough love and criticizing? Is that the question? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yes, this is a popular. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is one of the things in relationships that uh, we want to impart. Um, when when you love, and you, when you love someone and you see the fullness and wholeness of who they are, there's no toughness or criticism required. Did you get that, Elle? So when we go back to the 10 steps, right? And you go back to the place of connecting with that other being, that's in front of you that you think might require tough love or um, criticism, when you're in full connection with them and seeing them from that place of the confidence of wholeness of who they truly are, and that they might be having uh, moments of separation with that are displaying through their personality, you can share with them I see the wholeness of who you are. You energetically keep sharing that with them. You can even verbally share, I see the, the wholeness of who you are. And that this is, it's your responsibility to create your life experiences. And, and it's for you, L, to own your experiences and to focus the energy of transmuting the criticism to a confidence of another in the form in the form of sharing hi this this is what i'm seeing displayed in the personality and yet i also see the wholeness of you are that you are from in this level of activity. So let's bring in an example. In a workplace situation, a boss might have to criticize an employee. And we're gonna use the word criticize because that's the word that you're using. Instead, there can be a way that the boss can connect fully with the employee and ask them, so I see that you have this level of capability for this task. It seems that there's a, you're struggling with it. Would you like to share with me what is happening for you in this struggle to accomplish this task because I know that you're capable of doing it. So you hold the level of confidence and seeing them in the wholeness while also reaching out the hand to say, and what is needed for you to connect to your wholeness? Is there some sort of support that I can provide to you on an energetic level? Well, you wouldn't tell them energetic can provide for you that can assist you back into completing this task versus saying you're you're failing you're not doing your job and you're out the door right. so there's a level of connection that needs to come forth and the confidence in seeing the wholeness of who they are and then having the curiosity to come together to co-create solutions so that the overall mission can be realized and then celebrated. Yes, thank you. 
Thank you for that. Um, we have some questions in the chat. Um, I'll start at the. I'll start with them. Um, Udiyaman Shukla has a question, and he, he says, uh, "Is it true that God and the Creator beings will be intervening a lot more on Earth from September onward?" Um, this is an intuitive download that I'm getting that their non-intervention policy is ending. I think you touched on a little bit about that, but yeah. Yes. So yeah, they um, they've already started intervening. <laughs> uh, the the non-intervention policy has uh, has fallen by the wayside, um, has been released, and um, they're able to share and intervene um, on our behalf. Uh, they're helping us to remember the wholeness of who we are. So um, there's nothing to fear. Um, stay in your heart space, and they um, and they will assist. They will assist. The more conscious you are in allowing that relationship to occur, and acknowledging it, and hearing the messages that they're sharing with you, the easier all of the transitions and transformations will be. The more we, uh, as humans, hold on to the old ways and the old beliefs of limitation and separation, then there will be an emphasized level of body and levels of depression and angst and all of that that can occur on a discomfort level. So know that you always have the choice to create your experiences. So if you choose that you do not want to experience communication from the other planetary beings, then you can state that. They may still be there to help out. <laughs> but if you just don't want to get involved in the dialogue and involved in uh, that from a belief system, um, you can create your reality and, and still say, I'm going to stay in the wholeness of who I am. So always know that no matter what is occurring around you, whether it's in your earth life or your intergalactic life, you are always, you always have the conscious choice to create your experiences. And that if you want to experience joy on infinite levels in your own fairyland of of existence, that is exactly what you will create. And if you want to be in fear and contraction and separation, and you feel that hell is be is upon us, then that's what you will create. Perfect. Thank you. Um, MM, that's a name, has a question. Said. Um, I recently discovered anger about what happened to me in the past. I don't want to dwell on it. I want to feel free and heal myself, but it can be a bit scary sometimes, like this anger. Any advice? Thank you. Yes, on the human level, allow your anger to be expressed and felt. Uh, oftentimes, um, there's a tendency to hold on and hold it in with whatever uh, is being experienced, to so go ahead and allow the free flow of those emotional experiences to occur uh, in a safe way. So uh, there's many ways that you can express anger in a way that doesn't um, get projected out to another person. Um, and, and once you feel like you've been able to move some of the, the anger from your physical self, you can then move to the emotional, um, uh, spiritual body of it 
and see the wholeness again of what all of the lifetimes uh, that you've experienced and how they've all contributed to you recognizing what wholeness is by experiencing the varying degrees of separation. So that anger that you're feeling is just is just that. It's it's anger at the separation, at judging the separation that occurred. You can release the judgment and just see it from a place of observation. Say, oh, okay, I needed to, my soul needed to experience that level of separation so that I could also know what wholeness feels like again. Right. For, I was having a conversation yesterday with someone and we were talking about meditation and things like that. And uh, she, she has very deep trauma from when she was a baby and been a, being abused as a baby. And she is having a hard time really placing it. She has feelings that are tied to lack of control and violation and anger that are so deep that she doesn't have the direct memory, but she has all of the resulting trauma. So for someone in that way, how do they release that? Without, you know, because we talked about uh, going back and looking at the inner child and she says, I don't want to see it. I don't want to, I don't want to relive it. You know, for her, it's too much. So just for her, what would be your advice? that all the traumas that are experienced in the human life, there are a series of experiences. And when they're at the number six on the clock of 12, they're the furthest away from wholeness. And that on a soul level, for the soul, needed to experience that level of separation and that level of pain so that it had a, a reference point to say, wow, okay, I'm going to consciously choose something different now. There's a level of allowance and surrender to the wholeness of who we are that comes from a place of conscious choice and allowance, allowing every cell of our being as humans to feel, to fully feel the wholeness. Think about every cell in the human body and that every cell has that ability to feel whole with the light and the divine intelligence and the love that exists within the infinite source of wholeness. So fully feel that. Place the attention there. And the action will release, it will transmute so there's an intention to stay in our wholeness of who we are and understand that every experience, every, as dark as they may seem, are just reference points on the clock of wholeness to the complete opposite of separation. And that they're just reference points. And we can acknowledge that it can bring us back into the wholeness that we are intention, the attention on that, and allow the action of all of that to transmute any of the judgments about it being bad or wrong. Just observe it as not like to experience that one again. Okay. Different soul choice next time.
on a soul level, there's a choice to experience victimization. There's a choice to experience being the bully. And now we're moving past that. We can always keep moving in the direction of wholeness in any moment. You don't have to wait for the next soul's life expression. You can do it in any moment. We all do all of it, correct? We all play all of it. I was just yeah. thinking of the uh, solilo soliloquy from Shakespeare. You know, all the world's a stage. Mm -hmm. All the men are merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. <laughs> Woo! And the dog agrees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, oh, okay. Um, I don't see any more questions in the chat. Are you, do you have anything else that you'd like to leave us with? Or if anyone else has a question, please um, go ahead and just unmute quickly. We'll, we'll take another question, but we're coming up towards the end. Anyone? I have a dog going crazy here. I, I want you to speak perhaps on the, how it is we really don't comprehend when we're going through stuff, how we really do choose all of these experiences. So we have all of these experiences to draw upon um, and, and they're all here to serve us. Yes, yes. So the more, so recognize that every experience that you're having exactly where you're at is all in divine order for your soul's evolution to experience all of what you're going through now, what you've gone through in the past, what you'll go through in the future. Release the judgment around it. Just allow life to occur and know that you still have the opportunity to consciously choose when you want to do that. You don't have to, you can still just say, oh, I'm, I'm gonna experience, I'm just gonna let life flow and experience all these variety of things that are occurring. Uh, I'm not gonna you know, put my two cents in and say, well, I'd like this river to direct right or to direct left. You, know, you can choose to experience life from that perspective. And you can also choose to be very much connected to the flow of that river, connected to the river banks and into the various rocks and the other fish and the other beings that are, with, are along that route in the river. And when you're fully connected that way and in relationship with it, the journey is much more joyful. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. <laughs> merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Right? We learned that as children. There's a lot of truth to that. Mm. So having the consciousness and the remembrance through the connection of our presence within ourself, the, our connections with the divine, that's the joyful way of living from a very conscious relationship perspective. Thank you. Thank you for that. So do you, we are, we're coming up to the end. So maybe we could ask and, and, and definitely we thank you so very much for being here and sharing your, your guidance and wisdom with us. Um, and we would like to ask you to definitely come back if you would, um, but maybe we can now ask you if you have a sort of closing statement that you would like to make or a blessing you would like to give or a meditation, a quick one you would like to guide us in. Um, that's really up to you. We're so happy that you're willing to to listen, that you're willing to take responsibility for the consciousness and the wholeness of who you really are. It 
it's an amazing journey to see how things have evolved on earth life. It's exciting to see it coming back into wholeness. To see the true, the trueness of what earth was meant to be. That cultural exchange program where all the different varieties of life's existence were a are able to be in relationship with one another from that place of wholeness. And in the degrees of separation that have taken place, that there's now a new level of appreciation for the wholeness and allowing that to continue to come forward in your life through the very conscious choice that you can make from your heart center. Let your mind drop into your heart. Let the creativity come up and into your heart. You are a full being in and of it yourself. You are the wholeness as unique expressions in your human form and all that exists on this planet. All forms are in their wholeness, just as they are. Continue to allow yourself to be curious and to just see the degrees of separations as just that, just numbers on a clock of experiencing something different from wholeness and knowing in the next moment we can all return back to wholeness in the middle of a conversation and do a do-over. Oh, I'm not in wholeness, you're not in wholeness. <laughs> Time out. Let's do this from wholeness, right? Fully trust and have confidence in yourself and all that's around you. We have it in you. We bless the amazing creations that exist across all the galaxies. And Earth is of special interest. <laughs> so thank you for having me. Very, very grateful. Much love to you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Karen. Thank you all. As Terry, I'm you back. really psyched to, to uh, be here with you all. Thank mm -hmm. you. Divine realm is super, super psyched. I, I did an intergalactic travel this morning and uh, I went up to the, um, the space station where a bunch of the intergalactic folks are and they were so excited. They were like, yay! <laughs> so they were really excited about um, being able to uh, have communication. I was like, you know, if there's anything you guys want to share, you know, just know that I'm avail available and, you know, that whatever needs to come through too uh, for for the highest soul's evolution of the people listening so mm. so we um i'm glad that you got that excitement and you got to share and that we got to uh share with you so there was a request in the chat that we end on ohm great and the way that we we talked about i grabbed my uke just so i could have a note you lead it, Karen. Yes. Well, I just want to explain. I just want to explain Ohm for a moment because there's there's two Ohms, but there's only really one. There's the A U M with the dot over the top, and then there's the O M with the M with the dot over the top, and they're actually the same. The Ohm that you see that is just O M is meant to be used in a very short way, like Om Namah Shivaya or Om Gam Ganapataye Namaha 
It's a very short uh, expression of the sound. And then the A-U-M is the long, it's the O-M, you know, and the A and the U together, actually, those two sounds make O, so it's actually the same. But the OM is the universal principle of the wholeness of who we really are. And uh, uh, Swami Vikananda, he, he made his entire uh, teachings only about OM. He said that if you chant OM enough times, you will reach an enlightenment and that, that OM is truly our real name. That's who we really are. So I tattooed my name on my arm so I wouldn't forget who I was. <laughs> That's my uh, thing. But just for the M, I want to share something to you very important about the M, the Anuswara. And Terry knows what this is. Uh, we did the same uh, teacher training. Um, the Anuswara is the unstruck sound. And, and I didn't understand it because a lot of people say, Om, and they really mm, push that M. But the unstruck sound, that M with the dot on it is a different sound than an M like in Michelle or much or making or any kind of sound. When you make a sound like O, when you just close your mouth and you continue that sound, the M sound appears. And so if you're doing O, what you're doing is you're letting that sound continue and you're just closing your mouth. And what's happening is it's in bringing it back inside like a wave. So the ohm coming out and then when you close it off with the M, what you're really doing is you're, you're pulling it back in and it's coming right back into yourself. Because most of this is not to make the sound outwardly, but in fact, to have it draw us M in, not M, but to draw us in, to draw us inside. So the ohm, what happens is you see is when most people make this ohm sound, it centers you. And the part that centers you is this mmm, this vibration of the mmm. But it's not a mmm, it's a mmm. And it's letting that resonance pull you inside into that vibration. So the way to do it is really to pay attention to those principles. And we pick a we pick a note usually. We'll do this note. This is the one we usually do. This is B flat. It's it's the svara of our teacher, the tone of our teacher. So it's oh. So we can't uh, we can't all unmute and do it uh, in synchronization, but we can do it in harmonization to the sound of this tone and in harmony with each other. So we'll do three ohms as we end, and then we'll end uh, with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, which is peace, peace, peace to all human beings and to everyone everywhere. So before we do that, I just want to say, this has been the Human Colony Hukula webinar. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to our page. Just click it right down there on the side. Uh, Terry, I don't know, do you have a website that people can reach you yet? You gotta unmute. You gotta unmute. <laughs> Terry, terryrenier.com, it's R-A-I-N-I-E-R. -I I'll put it in the bottom of the chat, but yeah. your name is there. I did spell yeah. it right. So terryrenier.com, awesome, I didn't know that. I have to check out the website myself. Well, yeah, it's the old one is there from 2011. Uh, so a new one is underway and, okay. and will be coming out shortly. I'll keep checking back. Yeah. Keep checking back for Terry. And Terry, you do sessions, is right? Yes, I do. Okay, so if you would like a session with Terry, you can contact her. Also, just to, I want to do these little housekeeping announcements before we go so we can end on a beautiful at the end of the, the meditation. But um, also, the 16th through the 21st of August is the Dansville Ascension Workshop that will. Um, be, it's $400 for five days. There's Reiki classes. There's all kinds of uh, wonderful uh, uh, meditations. And uh, I'm, now I'm losing my mind. There's all, there's all kinds of wonderful stuff. Just go there. It's on hukalo.org, the website. Like I said, subscribe to our channel. And then on Friday nights, we have the Hukalo 
a channeling practice group. You can find us on Facebook under Hukulo Practicing Group or something like that. Just join the group. You're, you're welcome to do that. So we're going to ohm on this note. Ohm. So here we go. Just take a deep breath. Take a seat that is worthy of your, your practice. Sit up straight. And take a deep breath in. Oh. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste, everyone. The fullness in I and everyone here recognizes and sees the fullness that is you. So namaste. Mm -hmm.